a story we first covered, Goon Squad, remember them? Uh, police officers decided to brutalize uh, black men. They decided to kidnap them, assault them, sexually assault them, beat them, shot one of them. We interviewed those men on the program. Now, the cops have been held accountable. They are going to prison. And the DOJ is launching an investigation into that entire department. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. I want to play some of what the attorney described as deep-rooted issues. Here it is. I mean, obviously, they had been doing this many times before. To get right. to this level, to get to this level and finally get caught, obviously, they had done this over and over again. So they, they didn't know Michael or Eddie, but uh, they decided that they were going to uh, commit these savage acts of torture, sexual assault, waterboarding, and uh, ultimately sh shooting Michael Jenkins in the mouth. I mean, that's, it, it sounds shocking. It sounds crazy. People had a hard time believing us, but I mean, to, today we are vindicated. It is all true. We covered this story from day one. I was contacted directly by that team. I believed them in that first conversation. We were able to secure an interview, an in-depth exclusive with the victims of that horrific crime, of those horrific crimes. Put up the cops who were involved in this gang known as the Goon Squad. Now, I want to remind you, this was such a reckless and criminal enterprise that according to the victims, everybody was aware that these individuals were crooked. And multi-jurisdiction, they brought a cop who's not even part of the sheriff's office, but belongs to an adjacent jurisdiction in order to brutalize these men. The office where deputies horrifically tortured Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, known as the Goon Squad case, those cops, Sheriff Deputies Hunter Elward, Brett McAlpin, Christian Dedman, Daniel Up, uh, Updike, and Jeffrey Middleton, and a police officer outside of the jurisdiction, Joshua Hartfield, received federal sentences ranging from 10 to 40 years in prison in March. The following month, they were sentenced in state court to 15 to 45 years in prison, which will run concurrently with their federal sentences. When we spoke to Eddie and Michael, they told us about the horrific act that happened. Here it is. At first, I, you know, was confused of, you know, who it may be, but uh, uh, once I got a uh, clear shot or uh, clear, you know, uh, sight of uh, who it was, uh, I. I kind of knew, you know, the gist of what was uh, about to happen. Yeah, man, I mean, my jaw is like, it's a, like a, like my nerves, like a bad burn feeling. It's hard to explain the, the pain, but it's, I mean, if you ever had a toothache, man, I know how bad a toothache can get, just man, you, you nerve in your jaw. They shot him in the mouth while kidnapping him, making them shower together, breaking eggs over their heads. These individuals are psychopaths, okay? Empowered by that sheriff's department. The federal investigation will now examine the Rankin County Sheriff's Department itself, which is where we wanted this to go completely from the beginning. And if this sheriff's department engages in unconstitutional practices of using excessive force, racially discriminatory policing of black residents and conducting unlawful stops, searches and arrests. The civil rights investigation is the 12th pattern or practice probe of law enforcement misconduct launched during the Biden administration. Rankin County is located just east of Jackson, 
the state's capital. Parker and Jenkins said the investigation is a first critical step in cleaning up the sheriff's department and holding Rankin County legally accountable for the years of constitutional violations against its citizens. So issue uh, here is rooted in a corrupt system. So now the sheriff faces calls to resign. No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere, sheriff. Stay right there. Okay. Because I would love to see you arrested on your own campus that you have brutally assaulted individuals, allowed these deputies to run amok in that community. And obviously you knew because there were complaints galore. Since the horrifying uh, brutality of the Goon Squad case came to light, the Justice Department Civil Rights Division has received other reports of the department's deputies overusing tasers, entering homes unlawfully, using racial slurs, and deploying dangerous cruel tactics to assault people in their custody. The five Rankin County officers who were under the purview of Sheriff Brian Bailey, who was reelected in December, as details from the brutal torture of Parker and Jenkins made national headlines and rocked the community, the sheriff has faced growing calls to step down in recent months amid allegations. He failed to properly supervise, monitor, and discipline the deputies, no, no, he supervised them all. He monitored them. Believe that. Hell, may have ordered them to do so. Remember, the report that came out as to why this happened to them, what was the cause and effect? Well, according to what the gentleman said, the cops were telling them because they had the audacity to date white women. And they were perplexed as to what in the hell are these cops even talking about? But even if they wanted to, obviously there's no statutory dynamic against that. Used to be in America, used to be completely illegal. Hell, it was illegal to marry somebody outside your race if you were a black man. Bailey has insisted he was not aware of the goon squad, he says. Now remember, this is the same sheriff that protected them immediately when the reports came out. Protected them immediately. And then when the evidence was overwhelming, because there was a medical report. One guy had to go to the hospital with a bullet wound in his face that nobody could explain, okay? Then the sheriff changed. So he said he had no knowledge of this, the goon squad uh, of deputies until federal charges were filed, which was August, 2023, saying that he was ashamed and the badge of law enforcement was, quote, tarnished by the criminal acts of these few individuals. Hmm. Now, that's what you call a real politician right there, not a public servant. I mean, he has he has thrown them completely under the bus in order not only to protect himself, but protect the rest of the goon squad that's still in that damn department. We will continue to follow this story. We will not let up. We will not stop. Senator Turner, you know what's happening here. What, you, what are your thoughts? It's the same thing, Doc, again, who's watching the watcher, yep. the sheriff, if the sheriff had any integrity at all, which he has proven not to have any integrity, he would resign and, and, right. and run, just run away, just run away and never come back from being ashamed of what his officers have done under his watch. Your point that he probably knew is exactly right. He probably knew. And the fact, even if he didn't know what, what at, at some point you got to know. I mean, it's ridiculous. Right. So that another reason why he should go, because if you don't know that there's a whole ass goon squad running in your sheriff department, then that's grounds for termination right there because you can't supervise. You're not a good manager and you need to go. Similar to the story that we just did, this again is a systemic failure. This is another example of how America operates. And it's just, Doc, I mean, it's, 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 it's crushing to know that in the 21st century, Black people are still enduring some of the same pain points that they endured in the 20th century, yep. the 19th century, the 18th century, the 17th century, and on and on and on. This is just a manifestation, again, of how America operates. And it made me think, Doc, about the box of Jack Johnson that I know you're very mm, familiar oh, with. Yeah. That since these officers yep. are so upset and angered, that these black men would have the audacity to date or be in relationship with a white woman. I mean, the federal government changed whole laws because of Jack Johnson, the yeah. boxer. I, I, I encourage our 
viewers to go and do that research. So again, we, this stuff, we can't even make this stuff up, Doc. These are holdovers from how this country was formed and the macro and micro aggressions that black people have to endure every single day that very well can get them killed. Now, those two men, their lives will never, ever, ever be the same. It doesn't matter how, how much money they get is important. Don't get me wrong, but no amount of money is going to undo the damage that these folks did. Let me bring up the one, the great Fannie Lou Hamer too, who was jailed by a sheriff's department and that sheriff's department had other detainees beat her yep. and her companions, her colleagues for the crime of trying to register black people to vote. Now this happened in the 20th century. None of this stuff is ancient history, Doc. So I need folks to understand this. I need them to wrap their minds around the fact that black folks, black liberation is still not fully uh, recognized in this country. It's not, it's not, it's not fulfilled that this That's country right. still owes such a debt to us. And I remember reading a quote and I wanna end with this where somebody wrote, I don't know who this somebody was, but they are brilliant, that this country is lucky that black folks only want justice and not revenge. That's the morality of humanity inside of the soul of black folk across this nation. All right, we'll update obviously uh, that story.